Hello, I am William Gispen, and I'm here to present work that I did together with Austin Lammercraft. And this work is about finding approximations of quantum wave functions with a new approach based on reinforcement learning. And this approach applies to quantum lattice models. And these are simplifications that are useful for systems where particles are confined to a lattice. So this is an example of a system that is used in quantum computing where <clears throat> particles are in a square lattice and they have interactions by their spin orientations. So each particle here has either an up, up or down, uh, spin up or spin down. So here in this lattice you can represent that with just a black or a white square, where black is like spin up and white is spin down. And even for these simplified models, it can be quite difficult to find the low, low or zero temperature behavior. <clears throat> because these spin configurations, if, even if each particle only has a spin up or spin down, can have two to n different possible configurations, if n is the number of particles. So if you'd like to know the ground state, that, that's a mapping for that is a mapping that maps each pin configuration to a complex number. That is a mapping that has two to the n different possible inputs. And to solve this problem, um, over the past, past five years, it has become popular to use deep learning. So to represent this wave function using a neural network. And so what you do is that for each pin configuration, you, you put it into um, a convolutional neural network and it spits out a complex number. And these uh, wave functions are then optimized using variation on Monte Carlo. And this is an intuitive approach which basically evaluates the energy of a wave function and then tries to minimize that. Um, because like a ground state is the minimum energy state, um, so what you need to do do is calculate energy and minimize that. And then you evaluate that energy using a Monte Carlo approach. But I'm here to talk about another optimization approach that is a competitor or alternative to this variational Monte Carlo method. And that's based on reinforcement learning. So the basic idea is that you can see this <coughs> spin configuration as a sort of game board where making changes to the spin configuration is equivalent to making a move on a game board. And to show how this leads to uh, an optimization method, I'll go through three steps. And the first is to sh show you something about how, what kind of moves you can make and how that characterizes the ground state wave function. Then I'll show you how that translates into a reinforcement learning problem to finally show how that leads to a practical method for optimizing wave functions. And I'll show you also show, show you some experiments. So to start with, uh, about these dynamics of the ground states, and this applies to so-called subquestic Hamiltonians. These are Hamiltonians which can be decomposed into a kinetic part and a potential energy part. So this first part, this kinetic, this kinetic energy, this gamma, that determines what kind of moves you can make, what kind of changes you can make to the spin configuration. Now I have two examples here, and one is the XY model, where the moves you can make is actually moving a spin up to a spin down. So here you see a spin up, a black square moving downwards to, um, um, to, to move downwards. The second example is an Isaac model where the moves you can make is actually uh, flipping a spin. So what you see here is that this spin up changes into a spin down. So what's important to note is that these, these moves are inherent to the Hamiltonian that you're studying. So they're inherent to the model and that immediately determines what kind of moves you can and changes you can make to these spin configurations. Um, and these, these changes and moves, they actually happen in, in, in so-called imaginary time. So that may be a bit confusing if you haven't seen that before, but the dynamics in imaginary time, so this uh, imaginary time Schrodinger equation, that is actually um, an, a time evolution that leads to the ground state if you go to infinite time. So that's why we're interested in this time evolution, because we're interested in the ground state specifically, in the zero temperature and low temperature behavior. And for a sequestic Hamiltonian, those are those that can be decomposed in these kinetic and potential energy parts, that leads to a representation of this time evolution, which is called the Feynman Kac representation. And what it basically says is that the wave function at a certain time can be really related to the wave function at a later time by averaging over all trajectories that lead to, from, from the first to the later time. So these trajectories where, where, what I talk about are just 
the trajectories of moves that are determined by the kinetic part of the Hamiltonian. And these, in this expectation, the trajectories are weighted by the potential energy. So um, trajectories that lead through high energy regions have a lower weighting than trajectories that lead uh, that go through low energy regions. So the energy is given by this potential energy. So having this Feynman CAC representations oh, paves the way for a reinforcement learning formulation. And I first need to mention that Tolzov around 10 years ago showed that maximum entropy reinforcement learning can be linearized. And what we do here is actually the reverse. So going from a linear equation, from this Feynman CAC representation of the ground state, which is linear in this wave function here, um, we apply a logarithmic um, transformation, and then we end up with a soft Bellman equation. So we end up in reinforcement learning. And so how this translates is that this wave function, it maps to the, the state value function in reinforcement learning, and the potential energy of your system maps to the reward. Um, so this is like this is a schematic representation of this soft Bellman equation, which might be useful if you're used to this this representation. Um, but what it ba basically says uh, tells you is how these um, what kind of reinforcement learning problem it is. What what are the rewards? So in this case, the potential energy, and what are the how are the the, the state functions related? In this case, by a soft max. So you see how the, so how quantum mechanics is related to um, its reinforcement learning just by a logarithmic transformation, and this leads to a practical method for optimization. And this this method has um, for the optimization of neural quantum states. And this method has four steps. And the first step is to represent the action value with a convolutional neural network. So basically, what you want to do is for each spin configuration, you want to represent the value of making each of these changes to the spin configuration, each of these moves. And then what you do is optimize this action value function using uh, soft Q-learning. So this is a, an optimization method by Hernoja and, and others. Um, and this is a way of solving this soft Bellman equation. And once you've done that, once you've optimized your action value function, this gives you a ground state uh, approximation for the ground state wave function. And because it was simply a logarithmic uh, transformation, the, what you get is that the softmax of this, of this action value function gives you your wave function. And the final step is that if you have this, this, um, this optimized action value function, that also gives you a policy. So it tells you what moves are best. And so you simply follow that policy to sample your ground state probability distribution. And these, these samples you need to calculate observables uh, of, like, of the, the ground state behavior. Um, so just to discuss some pros and cons of this method is that the first actual con is that if you want to represent this value function, this, state, this action value function, is you need a slightly larger convolutional neural network. And that is because usually just have as an input a spin configuration, as an output just a single number, which is like the wave function of that configuration. Um, but now you need to represent, for each move you can take from that spin configuration, you need to represent the value. So that leads to a slightly larger network. But two advantages are uh, in, in, in speed. And the first one is that this soft Q learning approach has very fast update steps. Um, so one reason is that you can use off-policy optimization, so you don't need to uh, resample states uh, to improve your uh, your action value function. And the second reason is that you need just need fewer uh, neural network calls, so fewer calls of your uh, action value representation than in a variational Monte Carlo approach. Um, and the second uh, advantage is when you're actually sampling your ground state probability distribution, and that's because you've learned the policy. So you've learned something about which moves are best to take. So if you're sampling your ground state with um, a Monte Carlo approach, like a Markov chain Monte Carlo approach, this leads to better steps with better changes, leading to a higher acceptance rates and a faster sampling of your eventual ground state probability distribution. So to show you some results of experiments we did, um, we took a six by six Ising model and um, 
and just to show that it works, it, it, we, we obtain like a 0.1% error in the ground state energy um, using just 20 minutes of training time. So that's, this is, this is not like a state of the art result yet, but it's, it just shows you that it, it works in practice. What's maybe more interesting than that is that it's, um, if you go to the sampling of the ground state probability distribution, because of this policy, you can get uh, a speed of, of the, the square root of n, where n is the number of particles in your system. Um, yes. So if you would like to know more about this, um, in this talk, I mainly talked, actually only talked about the continuous time formulation. But in our paper, we also described two different reinforcement learning formulations, which also lead to their own optimization methods for neural quantum states. And if you're interested in how this applies to continuous state cases, so to atomic systems, molecular systems, then also please read um, our paper and our contribution of last year. So just to conclude, uh, I've shown you how quantum mechanics can be related to reinforcement learning, and specifically how this leads to new optimization methods for neural quantum states. And the main advantage of this method may be faster optimization steps and faster sampling of your ground state probability distribution. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and please contact me or Austin if you'd like to know more. If you have any questions, please do. Thank you.